Well, welcome to this webinar. Um, my name is Rob from thelazytrader.com, and we're going to discuss some of the trades we've taken over the past month, how they've done, in addition to what is looking good on the horizon for trades coming ahead. And there's plenty going on in the markets. We had quite an active September. We might be called the lazy trader, but we've been pretty active in our trading, and I really want to I'll just show you how we've done that and how you can do the same. And really, half your or most of your skill set as a trader is your ability to independently view the market, analyze it, and look for these opportunities for yourselves. Okay, it's all very well us giving you trade ideas, and but if you're at a stage where you can independently analyze the markets yourself and do it yourself, then you're at a very good uh, juncture. Okay, so first things first, um, saying a little bit about who you're talking to. My name's Rob, founder of thelazytrader.com. Um, I've been trading since 2007 and um, predominantly in Forex and stocks. Uh, swing trader, set and forget trading, really only trade the daily and the weekly time frame because it really just suits my lifestyle. I never chose trading to become a full-time trader. I, I in front of the screen, 8, 9, 10, 15 hours a day. No, thank you. I chose trading because I knew it was a vehicle that I could happily slot into my lifestyle and go about my merry day doing something slightly more interesting than watching a bunch of moving lines all day, quite frankly. So um, after that, I incepted the lazy trader.com and have since written for a variety of publications, um, as you can see. But anyway, I'm pretty sure you didn't come to the webinar to hear me talk about myself. So let's get Get straight into the pith of it. Do have a look at the disclaimer and have a sight of it. There's nothing different to what you've seen before of us. Um, and let's go into the live trades. I just want to talk to you first um, in sequential order. Um, the CAD yen, Euronoc, Pound Aussie, Dollar Singapore, and the Aussie dollar. They're all trades you've taken uh, and had a varying level of success. Had a great end of the month as well. And we've got plenty in the watch list. So let's go straight to the charts, and I'll show you. Okay, so CAD yen. I'm just going to go and simulate this so that we can view this in real time. Okay, so on the 1st of September, the charts looked like this okay this is cad yen and we can see here that we're in an overall downward moving trend we've got order angle and separation is between these moving averages we've got the 20 below the 50 and the 50 below the 200 we've recently broken a level of support here and we've also got a fibonacci retracement to the just 50 percent fibonacci just about and what we saw here on the 31st of August or 1st of September was what we call a smash bar. And we looked to trade this short because we saw this as being quite an efficient entry into the continuation of this downward moving trend. Okay, a smash bar is basically where we've had the break of a level of support here, but we've got a bullish pin bar reversal closing into it like we had here. You see that it's a bullish pin bar reversal. Some of you might see it as a morning star, for example. But the fact of the matter is, is it's got a open and close in the top third with a tail below the level. So what we looked to do was to speculate that, hey, if the low of this bullish pin bar reversal is breached, then the bars which actually turned up at the t bottom of this bar are proven to be no longer there will be triggered into the trade and not before. OK, so generally these setups, these smash bar setups, are pretty safe entries, okay? If you look at this bar here, a bullish pin bar reversal by virtue of a bullish pin bar reversal is where we've had, for example, a seller day, but in the day, we've seen the bars coming in and rushing in to drive price up again and causing it to t uh, close in the top third of the bar. And the fact that it's tested a price point, i.e. has this tail here, is significant to us because it shows that the bulls are at this level. However, if we're at a valid technical level here, testing a level of support as resistance in a downward moving trend, then we could say that if we do get the continuation of price to the downside, then we know full well that the bulls which initially caused this to low test um, are breached, i.e. the low of this bar is breached, then at least we know full well that we could potentially see a very efficient price or movement 
the downside. So what we did was we placed our order just below the low of this bar on the 31st, stop loss above the high, and we anticipated a move to the previous swing low. Okay, so we got triggered into the trend very nicely on day one, day two, day three. Then we moved our stop loss to the high of this bar here on the 4th of September. If we're trading conservatively in a downward trending market, then we'll trail our stop loss below, sorry, above the high of every second seller bar here. So at that, then price unfortunately came back to stop us out at a small loss here, which is absolutely fine. Because it means that if we're able to get out the trade objectively for a small loss, then at least we're out of a trade which was never meant to be okay. You can see that if people did hang on in this trade, and for the rest of the month here, they'll be in purgatory, i.e. be watching their uh, position turn from profit into loss, from profit into loss all month. And as traders, what we want to do is we want to be in those moves which we want to truly go in our favor and don't look back. Okay, so we're happy to take a small loss in return for not being in this horrible trade, which did nothing but move sideways. And of course, had you not moved your stop loss, you would have taken a full hit as of the turn of October. So we're happy with the outcome there. We're objective. And this is a very good management technique, by the way, for those of you who are trading trend based trades. Trail above the high of every second seller bar. Because it will mean, on one hand, you're locking in profit along the way if the trade's going in your favor. And you're also giving your trade and the market enough room to breathe. So if it does move against you or breathe against you, um, as markets tend to do, nothing goes up or goes down in a straight line, then at least you'll cover for that. You're not um, taken out prematurely unless the, the trend bends and goes against you. And if it does, then at least you've minimized the downside. And that's what it's all about. On one hand, it's um, spotting the opportunity like we did. And then once we've spotted it and traded it, it's about managing it. So a lot of people when they're new to financial markets, they forget that the management is key. And certainly um, when it comes to opportunities, opportunities are random. They're like buses that turn up in London. I don't know if any of you are from London here. I know there's a familiar names. Some clients of mine in the room, I believe. Um, hello. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Opportunities are random. They can turn up at once or never at all. And that's the same for winning and losing opportunities as well. Okay, you can have a string of winners and you can have a string of losers. And we started off the month um, with a string of break-even and small losses, actually. We ended the month on a real storming note. So I want to really share exactly how that happened. So I'm going to move on to Euro Knock. This was a trade which we took early um, in September, I believe it was the 10th of September, I was down in Cornwall then having holiday um, with my family and I saw this set up on the daily time frame and it looked like a great opportunity to simply buy the dip in an upward moving trend. You know, trend based trading is essentially that, buying the dip in an upward moving trend or selling the rally in a downward moving trend. And this is what we did. We had a British pin bar reversal here. We had great order angular separation between the 20, the 50 and the 200 moving averages. We had bullish reversal divergence with the RSI setting six, which gave us the extra clue that the bulls were well and truly creeping back into the market here. OK, so what we did here conservatively was we placed an order to go long. Above the high of this low test bar, stop loss below the low. I want to share with you what we did on the smaller time frames to really confirm this move in our in our view, okay, so you can see that on the hourly here, we had this downward moving uh, trend, which basically um, reflects the retracement on the daily time frame. But when we had our setup bar, the doji, or the bullish pin bar reversal, like I said, um, that correlated very nicely with the break of this trend line on the hourly. You see this downward moving cyclicity represents the retracement or the seller bars on the daily time frame. But as we've got a breakout of this downward moving trend on the hourly and an inverse head and shoulders here and the break of this trend line and the break of the neckline here, it gave us extra confirmation that this trade looked like it potentially was going to go and go in our favor. So what we did, it was also an outside bar as well. So what we did, place an order above the high, stop loss below the low, in anticipation of a trend continuation to the previous swing high here for a decent 2.5 to 1 reward to this trade. So we got triggered into the trade after day one. Fantastic. It's all very well and good. And then we had a second bar bar. Remember what I said about the two bar trailing technique? It enables us to minimize the downside um, if we're only just in the trade, in addition to locking profits along the way. So we moved our stop loss from the low of our setup bar here to the low of day two 
as we trail below the low of every second buyer bar. And then we had a seller bar, uh-oh. And then we got triggered out at a very small loss, which is absolutely fine, because as you can see here, the trade didn't really go our way either until this point here. I know some members, some clients did keep in the trade there and made that gain on Neuronock um, because they like to take an all or nothing outcome, which is absolutely fine. But they might have made the gain on Neuronock here and hit target for a 2.5 uh, to 1 just about, but that would have been offset slightly by the loss they would have been insured on CAD yen as well. Okay, so let's move on. We've got a couple of winning trades on the horizon, and I just want to really share them with, with you. We took... Um, for example, talking about winning opportunities occurring at the same time, we had our um, dollar Singapore, US dollar versus Singapore dollar set up. Let me just find that on the chart. Here we are. And our Aussie dollar short set up all arriving at the same time. The set up were both on the same day. So we had this uh, set up here. If we have a look, we had two British pin bar reversals in succession. That's absolutely fine. We can see here that the US dollar versus the Singapore dollar, we are an upward moving trend confirmed by the fact we've got this um, 20 above the 50 and the 50 above the 200. And we've also got the retracement to this horizontal level here. So it was a simple case for us to simply buy the dip at an upward moving trend. Furthermore, we can see here with these retrace with these bars here, these seller bars, the high of these seller bars um, has not been breached for at this point here. One, two, three, four, five, six days. OK, so for those people who had their orders above the high of this British pin bar reversal on the 18th of September, um, they would be safe in the knowledge that if they're triggered into the trade, it will be quite a significant event if that happened, because, of course, the high of each bar of retracement has not been breached over the past six, seven days. So that in itself is a observation. So people will put that entry above the high plus spread plus the extra pip with their stop loss below the low minus spread minus the additional pip. Um, the first target would be the previous swing high for a higher probability, lower reward trading outcome. That's absolutely fine. So tentatively, we risked about, I think it was 129 pips in order to get um, 278. That's a pretty good reward to risk. And uh, those people who would rather a lower probability outcome, but would have a um, higher profit in doing so, would actually target a higher level. So what happened? Well, we got trading in, triggered into the trade day one. That's absolutely fine. It went, really flew. Day two went our way again. So tried our stop loss below the low of day two. Then we had day three. Fantastic. It hit target. A lot of people decided to take profit at that point there. We had a doji bar, which followed, which is a bar of indecision. Um, typically, that's a warning sign when it comes to the previous swing high. It tells us that, hey, OK, uh, there's a lot of people taking profit. There's indecision. Is this really going to continue while well, the market's undecided? Um, I'll take that as a bit of a warning sign. And the fact that we've got a lower high here on um, the RSI gives us a signal that there's bearish reversal divergence. And when that happens, that's a sign to us that the strength of the bulls is becoming far less and the bears are starting to creep back into the market. OK, it's a subtle warning. It's not like, oh, my goodness, get out of the trade. What's happening? What are you doing? It's just a subtle warning. And it's a clue that, you know, if you did want to take profits here, that would be a reasonable time to do it. I know a number of people who decided to sell out of the trade, a number of our clients did do that. They took half their profits off the table in anticipation of further push to the upside. Um, but of course, that gamble on tenterhooks over the last, over the, the um, following three days, we saw the market just failing to make any really decisive high highs. And we've got retracement right here. So it'll be interesting to see what happens at this level here. If we get a Another push to the upside. You can even see a head and shoulders. I don't know, but we've got bearish reversal divergence here quite overtly now. And um, yeah, we've still got order angular separation here um, with this. So the fact of the matter is, is it's still objectively in an upper trend. So we cannot go saying that we should sell this short. That would be a gamble unless we're selling after a major reversal pattern has been confirmed. And I'm going to show you a few of these 
a little bit later on. Okay, so I do have one client in the room, Steve. Hi, Steve. <laughs> so anyway, um, that is uh, Singapore dollar. That was a good trade, and a, a number of my clients took it. Aussie dollar. What happened of Aussie dollar? Well, I'm going to show you exactly what happened of Aussie dollar. It gave us a very good sell signal, almost too good. You know, sometimes you get these perfect technical setups, and I've always got this um, rhetoric where you should be aware of the perfect trade. Um, there is no such thing as a perfect trade because no matter what your setup is in the market, you can be rest assured that there's going to be someone else in there taking the other side of your trade. Okay, that's why it's called a market. In order for you to get into the market, somebody else is going to have to take the side of it, the other side of it. That's if you've got a, um, a direct market access account. Of course, if you haven't, if you've got a B book broker, then they'll be taking the other side of your trade, like a book is. But if you're direct market access, then some some other person in the world will be doing the exact opposite and having exactly the opposite view. So there is no such thing as a perfect trade. OK, um, but certainly we're trading a trend based trade. We are going uh, with the grain of the market. So we've got probabilities uh, more often than not in our favor, just like we did on the 18th of September here with Aussie dollar. We had two consecutive British pin bar reversals here. And just like the inverse image of uh, dollar Singapore, we had an opportunity to sell the rally here. As, we, as I've mentioned before, we've got the 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 20, sorry, the 200, my apologies. And this is a great way of objectively telling us that we have decent um, momentum and direction in the market. Momentum and speed in the market is the word I'm looking for here. We've also got bearish reversal divergence here by virtue of the fact that we have a higher high on price, but a lower high with this RSI making a lower high like so. So that's a clue to us that the uh, bulls, which initially caused this to retrace and breathe in before potential um, extension, phase one extension and a lower low, it's a sign to us that we're starting to get there. And the bears are getting weak, sorry, the bulls are getting weaker after two rejections like so. So uh, another thing you need to be aware of with this one as well after this, um, setup formed is the fact that the previous one, two, three, four, five, six days lows have not been breached. So people who wanted to position themselves in a very conservative manner and have that entry just below the low of this bearish pin bar reversal, our sell signal in a downward trending market, um, will only be safe in the knowledge if they're triggered by having their stop loss, sorry, their entry below the low of this bar. Okay, so by virtue of the fact that they haven't, the well, price hasn't had for the past six days, any of the lows of these bars breached. If that happened on the day of our activated bar, then that is a valid signal that we've got a continuation to the downside here. So what happened? We placed our orders up, and then we got triggered into the market very nicely. Day one, day two, we trailed. We put our stop loss, trailed our stop loss above the high of this second seller bar here, just like the conservative strategy. Um, for trend trading will dictate to us on one hand like i said we want to lock in profits and on the other hand we want to give the market enough room to breathe and mitigate downside risk so we did that on one occasion and then we had a second occasion to do it so and then we had this hiatus like so you can see the aussie dollar is well, at this point struggling to make a lower low I know some people who took profit at this point got sick of waiting, understandable. And then we had this. The Aussie dollar is now making a move to the upside. And what is interesting about the Aussie dollar is the fact that we are seeing a potential double bottom reversal here. Okay, we've got the high low, which is a warning sign. But until we get um, the golden cross with the 20 crossing the 50, we cannot really objectively say we are going to be in a um, upward trend. We could just see a period of complex retracement a hiatus between now and when the market next makes a decisive low. I mean, it happened here before, all the way back in April, we saw um, this hiatus, this complex retrace with higher highs and higher lows over a couple of, um, over a month and a half or so. And we could get it again. That's absolutely fine. The markets do do this. Nothing ever moves up or moves down in a straight line. Okay, so that's Aussie dollar. All right, so that was our month for September. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, quite a few trend-based plays. We had a number of small losses, uh, two small losses, and we had two decent um, wins as well. So, you know, this was all finding setups, which took really minutes out of our day to do so. And if we can find um, a style of trading which allows us 
to make a decent monthly return from trading from looking at from the looking for these setups for many minutes a day rather than spending eight hours a day trading a small account then that's the sweet spot really and a lot of people fall into this trap they'll try and they'll start off with a small trading account and they'll try and double it um through not following risk management rules and over trading and not really only trading strategies or, or setups which fulfill their strategy okay um, so that's what is what happened in September, what is on the horizon? Let me have a look for you. I just want to show you a couple of setups which we're watching very closely. Um, one is one of our old favorites is Euro Sterling here, like so. On the weekly. So there we have it. On the weekly, yep, the weekly time frame is a valid time frame to trade. We had last week, it closed as a bearish pin bar reversal, like so. And it was a false breakout of this rectangular box here. So the fact that it had the tail above this level shows us that it was a false breakout to the upside, but the bias is still down. We've still got the 200, the 50, and the 20 moving average here. Order and separation is still there. I know the 20 EMA is hooking up, but you know what? The um, euro sterling has been range bound for, um, well, ever since. March this year, so no wonder it's moving sideways and hooking up. I mean, that's a given. So what we're looking at doing is simply trading the break of the low of last week on the weekly. The stop loss above this week's high and trading it to the bottom of this range here. It's quite a simple trade, really. We've also got bearish reversal divergence on our side here, like so, lower high. And fact of the matter is, is this gives us the clue that the strength of the bears is getting heavier and the bulls in this retracement phase are getting weaker. Furthermore, if you look at the four hourly, oh, let's have a look here. We do have a rather dirty looking reversal pattern here. A very skewish looking head and shoulders. That's absolutely fine non-farm payroll here. Left hand shoulder, right hand shoulder. It's not the best head and shoulders, but the fact of the matter is it's breaking out this this choppy consolidation here. And on the weekly, it does look good. In our opinion, that is. Of course, nothing in the market is ever guaranteed. So in terms of reward to risk, let's have a look. If our orders to go short, it's just below the low of last week. And our stop was above this week's high. That's tentatively about 90 pips risk. And we're going all the way to the bottom. That's roughly a three to one. How many weeks will it take us to realize this? How long is a piece of string? It could be a month. It could be a few weeks. It could be Christmas. But the fact of the matter is, is it if, if we've got a free to one reward interest trade, risking 1%, and we can get that over the course of, say, two months or even a month and a half, that's pretty good. And this trade looks like a very nice potential uh, setup for a sale. The bearish reversal divergence is pretty telling as well. You can see we've had a number of false starts like this setup here. I wouldn't have taken this bar, um, this weekly bar either. It's too big and too cumbersome. And when if you get a close like that at the very bottom with such a big tail, generally the market just um, ranges afterwards as well and makes a very boring market. So that's a trade idea for uh, Euro GBP. Pound Aussie. Or was it Pound CAD? Sorry, I think I've got mixed up here. Ah, here we go. Pound CAD. So here we go. We had a double top reversal here. Break the neckline. And what we're going to do... I know we've still got high highs and high lows on the daily time frame. With the order angle of separation the moving averages if it just had the uh, dead cross the 20 moving over the 50 we've got this conspicuous lower high here in terms of price it's broken the neckline of this double top reversal so what we're waiting to do is wait for a retracement preferably to the neckline of this double top reversal and then we're going to potentially just sell the rally okay typically when we get a break of a neckline or a level of support resistance we get a retest if we get it great We'll look to trade 
our cell setup, which would be, of course, a bearish pin bar reversal after a period of retracement. So we've got this trail idea, and we're just waiting for it. We're like a um, huntsman in the woods sharpening his blade, waiting for his prey. We've got an idea as to what the market or what the market could do, and we know what to look out for. And when it happens, we'll trade the trade. If it doesn't, we'll move on to something else. Okay, we're not trying to force a trade out of nothing because that's what um, newbies do to the markets. And guess what? They lose a lot of money very quickly. I, I believe it's 90% of newbies who don't get trading lose 90% of their trading account in 90 days. That's a statistic which a broker um, told me off the record a number of years ago. And it's quite a frightening fact, actually. So that's pound cad. I just want to show you um, the FTSE as well. I know a number of you are tuning in from outside of the United Kingdom. I'm going to show you the FTSE on the monthly, on the weekly, sorry. You can see here that we've got a double bottom reversal, that higher low, like so. Seasonality is starting to look up for equities as well. Equities is very bullish around November, December, not least because of the Santa Claus rally. But what is interesting is the fact that um, we had an inside bar, inside hammer last month. It's broken to the upside. And now we could reasonably expect price to continue to the upside. But where will this rally go? We've already made the highs, all-time highs here um, in, I believe it was um, April. So if price gets up to here, for those reversal traders in the room, this would be a very good um, sell setup. All right. So must, markets have memory. All-time highs are fantastic places to potentially get short if you are a reversal trader and reversal traders sure enough they have more losing trades than winning trades but the winning trades which win uh, tend to make a staggering amount of gain and um i would if we do get the santa claus rally this year i can't remember a year when we didn't get the santa claus rally and the santa claus rally just to fill you in is just where Everyone gets excited before Christmas, everyone starts buying, and it's all very nice, and the market's just, the equities just go up and up in value. Okay, but it's until what point? That's the fact of the matter. Well, I would say that this previous all-time high um, tested in April is a very good place to aim for if you're long, or in advance to that if you're long slightly, but if you're looking to simply sell on this horizontal level, it's a high-risk trade, but then reversals tend to be high-risk anyway. Okay, so that's a couple of trade ideas for you. In the meantime, of course, when equities go up, the US dollar is going to go down in tandem. We've got this W-shaped formation um, on the Dow. Okay, and I know these are equities, but just if these were currency um, pair, we'll trade it exactly the same way. We're trading price action for price action's sake. Okay, so don't be. I know this is FX Street, and I know that we our primary focus it, our currencies. But you know what? If this was cable or Aussie yen, we would treat it, analyze it, and talk about it in exactly the same way. So with this one here, we've got this high low, we've got a W shaped reversal formation. So what I'm waiting for crucially is the break of this neckline here. And if I do get the break of this neckline and price moves up. Retests it after making a higher high, it comes back to retest the neckline, this W shaped formation. Then I'd look to go long on the Dow. Like I said, equities tend to be relatively bullish at this time of the year. All right, so I will um, wait for the confirmation for the Dow at least. All right, so uh, let's think of another one. I've got a couple of others to bring to your attention. US dollar versus the South African rand. You're still on an up trend here. Um, nothing too difficult about this one. Sure enough, we've got the 20 above the 50, the 50 above the 200. Still making avert higher highs and higher lows. And I'm just simply waiting to buy the dip here. All right, so in this instance, I'm just waiting for a signal bar. I'm also waiting for a reversal on a smaller time frame. I'm also waiting for um, some kind of bullish reversal divergence on the stochastic or indeed the RSI. But until I get that, I'm not interested. Okay. I'd rather have a two or three wave retracement coming into my buy as a zone. Haven't got it yet. I could get a ring low opportunity. Those people who know a ring lows are, are clients of mine. It's essentially a buy bar, buy a bar in the form of a bullish pin bar reverse or a doji bar after making a higher low in an upward trend. 
but we're seeing a lot of retracement at the moment. So I've got a couple of questions there here. Um, Shane, I, I trade off eSignal. Um, they're my charting package of choice. I know there are, lot, there are lots out there. You have to pay for it, though. Um, but it's worth the money. And if you're trading, um, I would recommend it's an investment well worth it. Uh, Steve, question, Aussie dollar, double bottom on daily. Absolutely. I did talk about that W-shaped formation on Aussie dollar. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in question time. But please keep these questions coming. But um, I hope I've given you some inspiration for potential trades. If we look on the weekly here, I know that US, sorry, the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar, okay, we're seeing this very fast retracement. It's absolutely fine. It's been going down for such a long time now. We can reasonably expect some kind of prolonged retracement on the daily. If we look at the weekly, we could look for sale opportunities on the weekly. We've got a much better, clearer perspective on the weekly. I would expect to get a ring high opportunity or sell opportunity on the weekly on um, Kiwi dollar or Aussie dollar. We just need to wait for that to form. Okay, still majorly bearish on the weekly. Look at how these moving averages are angled. Like so, we've got the 20 below the 50, 50 below the 200. I mean, it's, it's so obvious. Um, but I do like the look of Euro GBP. And like I said to you before, um, compared to previous weeks, there aren't very many opportunities this week. But that's absolutely fine. Um, because I know it's a cliche. I know a number of you might have had me say this before. But sometimes it's the trades that you don't take are the ones that make you the money. All right. Um, so what will determine, say for example, you know, I'm in Euro GBP on the weekly like I've talked about, and I'm in this, yet yeah, next week, for example, we're in the money this week, we get triggered in, next week we load test and we see a bullish pin bar reversal with an open and close on the top third, the bar and the tail at the bottom, I would simply move my stop loss to break even if that happens. That's a warning sign. And it's horrible when that happens, especially after a trade, uh, sorry, a trade which fulfills all of your rules. But you know what? The mar- Remember, the market doesn't owe you anything. And this is why it's important not to get emotionally attached to the outcome of your trades. It's so important not to do that. I mean, remember, markets are volatile. They're irrational. They can do anything at any time. And we are just simply looking to make money from the net sum of all trades. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. So, I mean, we've got a few trade ideas. Just to recap, we've got um, Euro GBP, the FTSE, uh, Pound CAD. What I like to do is just bring it back to question time. Um, I'm just going to go back to the slides very quickly. And um, just bear with me a minute. My computer is being very slow today. I've got a terrible internet connection. Um, one notoriously bad provider. Uh, I know a number of you British people will probably know exactly who I'm referring to. But anyway, what I like to do is I like to offer people who've made the um, time to come to the webinar, um, well, give them an invitation to something, which um, I'm very proud of, okay? It's an invitation to a brand you can trust. We've got a rating of 4.6 out of 5 on Forex Peace Army, and we're accredited by the Society of Technical Analysts in the UK. Um, professional, professionally recognized, and what I want to do really is just give you access to our premium ultimate lifestyle trading program valued at 1900 and 97 pounds or dollars even and i want to give you access to it for just 30 dollars and this is basically open until midnight tonight london time and what you get for your 30 dollars is access to our um, online mentoring hub which is our strategy videos and flipbooks you've got um weekly market analysis trade ideas um trader psychology we've got uh, proprietary our software, which automatically looks out for patterns. We've even got a trader psychology um, or trader hypnosis course, actually. So um, it's got everything you need, really, if you want to become a lifestyle lazy trader. All right, so you've got 88% off. If you want to take advantage of this offer, open until midnight tonight, London time, then please do visit the website, thelazytrader.com forward slash forex training. Go to the ultimate program and type in FX Street. That will give you your discount. Okay? Huge discount, and you can get it today only. All right? We'll even give you a refund if you're not completely happy. Very, very, very few people do this, but you know what? We don't like to have any bad blood, and um, but very few people do this. But as I say, the invitation is there for you. Um, thank you very much for being such a good audience. All right? So... That is 
what I've got for you today. I'm going to um, address some of your questions. Okay, let's have a look. What are your thoughts on long gold? Well, gold is a funny one. I know we're in a downward trend on the weekly and certainly on the daily with the moving averages. We've seen a few huge buy bars lately, but I'm going to wait and see for gold. Let's have a look here. Shane Bridger, uh, I have a very small life account. Is it wise to trade long-term trades with little capital or maybe uh, recommend a later entry point? Well, my response to that is very simple. Never uh, trade with money you cannot afford to lose um, is my first point. Um, if you're unprofitable or not getting the consistency that you want, what I recommend you do is start off on a demo account. Okay. The problem is if you've got a small account, is that you end up blowing your risk management out of the water. And instead of risking 1% of your trading account like you should, or all good, good traders should, um, they accidentally, you end up inadvertently just risking 10 or 20% um, just because you want to be in the trade. And if you have a losing outcome, that's very painful for you because you've blown a hole in a very small account. Okay, but the more money you have to trade, the easier it is. Okay. Um, so that is it. Any more questions? If not, then I would love to say thank you very much for being a great audience. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Again, do get in touch. If you have any questions, my email address is rob at the lazy trader dot com.